Good morning, men. Last Saturday, Patsy and I, my wife, we went to a wedding. We were standing out in the narthex of the, the Henry Chapel, chatting with some friends, and uh, the grandmother of the groom walked up and gave me a pat on the butt. I looked over at Patsy, and I saw that it wasn't her hand. I looked over there, and there she is, and she looked at me. She goes, whoops. <laughs> Patsy said, that's okay. He really likes that kind of thing. So, and then off she went. <laughs> uh, what a moment. I just love weddings. <laughs> We are doing a series, well, we were doing a series. (laughs) What's going on here, I wonder? I haven't touched it. Whatever. We're doing a series called uh, Doing Business God's Way, and we, each of these messages stands alone, so you don't have to be here, it's not like a TV show that's in serial. They each stand alone. We are in our third week. This morning, what I want us to do is I want us to talk about some... uh, I want to talk in in the neighborhood of character in business. And what are some of the... Let's develop the list. What's the list look like of a representative list of the issues in business that relate to to character? What would be some of the things? Trust. Honesty. Timeliness. Timeliness. Keeping promises then. What else? Uh, Money issues. Uh, Gosh, imagine that. The crown representative saying money issues. What else? Ethics. Ethics. Quality, commitment. Okay, so there, there are, are a plethora of character issues that we could talk about this morning. There are two character issues in particular which absolutely and completely are intolerable when violated. And those would be the exhibition of pride, or its counter, a lack of humility. And you know how you grate in business when somebody acts with pride. And then the, the other one is a lack of integrity. A lack of integrity. And this is just, it's inviolate. If you break the integrity rule, then in business, you will pay the price. Now, it's ironic because a lot of people that don't really think deeply about it, maybe people that aren't in business think, well, every, you know, everybody in business or lots of people in business you know, don't have integrity. That's absolutely not true. <laughs> because if you lack integrity, you will not last long in business. And so the plain truth of the matter is, is that almost everybody in business has integrity, Christian and not Christian. But it's such an important thing, and people do try to slip by. So we're going to talk about it this morning. This is the the message title, Integrity. To what standard should I hold myself, and what should I do when I fail? So we're going to drill down into integrity today. We're going to look at the standard for integrity We're going to take a little personal inventory, give you an opportunity to do that, and then we will talk about some of the things we can do when when we fail at this. And so we'll start with the the standard for integrity. You should be in your Bibles at Exodus chapter 20. Before we read that passage, let me just read to you a number of passages I'm not going to give you the the text addresses or anything like that. I'm just going to read on integrity from the Bible. This is God's word on integrity. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. Nehemiah said I put his of his brother, I put him in charge of Jerusalem because he was a man of integrity 
and fear God more than most men do. The Lord said to Satan about Job, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, and he still maintains his integrity. Job himself said, I will never admit you are right till I die. I will not deny my integrity. From the Psalms, O Lord, judge me according to my righteousness, according to my integrity, O Most High. May integrity and righteousness protect me. In my, integ- in my integrity, you uphold me and set me in your presence. And David, David shepherded it. Uh, shepherded it? <laughs> That's one too many EDs there. <laughs> and David took care of him with integrity of heart. From Proverbs, the man of integrity walks securely. The integrity of the upright guides them. Righteousness guards the man of integrity. They said uh, of Jesus, Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity and that you teach the ways of God. Paul and Titus, in everything, set them an example by doing what is good in your teaching, show integrity. Integrity is a huge theme in God's Word. Senator Alan Simpson said, If you have integrity... Nothing else matters. He said, if you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. Integrity is a very key component of life in general, of course, and business uh, in in particular. Now let's turn to uh, our attention to Exodus chapter 20. And I want to give you the standard for integrity. We're going to look in two places in the Bible, Exodus 20 and Matthew 7. The chapter contains the Ten Commandments. I I want us to skip over uh, the first few. Well, you know what they are. No other gods. No idols. Don't misuse his name. Keep the Sabbath. Honor your father and mother. Don't murder. Verse 14, don't commit adultery. Verse 15, you shall not steal. Verse 16, You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor lying. 17, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, wife, manservant, maidservant, ox, donkey, anything that belongs to your neighbor. And those are the Ten Commandments. Now turn over to Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. So those are the Ten Commandments. And now we're going to look at the golden rule. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. It's the golden rule. Jesus is speaking. This is right out of the Sermon on the Mount. And he says, In everything, in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, In everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. In everything you do. Whether it's relational or the terms of a contract, uh, treating people with kindness, courtesy. In everything that you do, do to others what you would want them to do to you. And then he finishes up, for this sums up the law and the prophets. So, in some sense, this is really the only text you need, the golden rule, in some sense, because it sums up the law and the prophets. But then the Ten Commandments give you some very specific applications of what it sums up. You know, how you, in everything you do, do to others what you want them to do to you. So, Specifically, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't covet, don't commit adultery, and so forth. Ronald Reagan I heard Bill Bright say this one time. He said that he had heard President Reagan 
say that all of the problems that we have in America could be solved if people would just pay more attention to the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. And Dr. Bright said, you know, at first I, I dismissed it. I said, well, that's too simplistic. I mean, there are some very complicated problems that we have, and it's just overly simplistic to say that, you know, the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule could solve those problems. Well, I went back and I found a speech that President Reagan gave where most likely Bill Bright heard this. I, I don't know, but it was at a, it was, it was a speech that Ronald Reagan gave to the National Religious Broadcasters Association at the Sheraton Washington Hotel in Washington, D.C. on 30 January 1984. And here's what President Reagan had to say. Government bureaucra bureaucracies spend billions for problems related to drugs, alcohol, and disease. How much of that money could we save? How much better off might Americans be if all of us tried a little harder to live by the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule? I've been told that since the beginning of civilization, Millions and millions of laws have been written. I've even heard someone suggest it was, well, over several billion laws. And yet, taken all together, all those millions and millions of laws have not improved on the Ten Commandments one bit. You know, a lot of times people will say, you can't legislate morality. You, everybody's heard this, right? What do you think that's true, that you can't legislate morality? Well, we can legislate morality. In fact, we legislate morality all the time. We legislate priorities as well. You know, expenditures go to roads or they go to airport expansion. That's a priority uh, piece of legislation. But we, we legislate morality all the time. We tell people, you, you, you can't rob a 7-Eleven store. You, you can't have non-consensual non uh, sex with a, a person of the opposite gender. Uh, you, you're not allowed to shoot somebody with a gun. We have all kinds of legislation. What people mean, I think, when they, I don't know because nobody's ever told me, but I think what they mean when people say you can't legislate morality, I think what they mean is you can't legislate people's behavior. And that is absolutely true. And so that's why we have to have enforcement. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I've said it before. Uh, I wouldn't expect anybody to remember it, but I, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb anyway and ask. I have before in this venue defined integrity. I have said that integrity is a one-to-one -one correlation between three things. Does anybody remember what those three things are? There you go. Oh, man. That was so quick and so good. How did you do that? Integrity is a one-to-one -one correlation between my Bible, my belief, and my, my behavior. So, yes, in order to have integrity, I need to behave biblically. But you can't, you can't behave your, your way out of something that you've believed yourself into. So, first, you, we have to... Before we can behave, we have to believe. And then, be, and then what we believe, that becomes the basis for... Oh, I just got to give you the gold star, man. That, that was just so good. boy, Good boy. Good boy, Johnny. Yeah, and so I... Uh, so... Is Ronald Reagan right? Is it really as simple as that, the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule? You know, it's interesting because uh, <clears throat> some of the big ideas that I've given you over the years, you've not been able to remember very well, which is okay because I don't remember them that well either. <laughs> but I wanted to give you something today that I think would be something that you would be able to remember probably for a good while. The big idea today is this. <clears throat> the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. 
That is, that is God's standard for integrity. The Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. And, and really, and really that's, that's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Now what I'd like to do is, uh, let, let's just take a little personal inventory. And um, this is not to rough anybody up, okay, because we're all seeking grace. We're all seeking... Uh, we're here because we're seeking to do the right thing with God. Here's some questions you might just take a moment and I'd like you to, 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 to apply these to yourself. You know, have I done something dishonest that has not been dealt with? <laughs> have I done something that shows poor judgment? I think it's worth distinguishing that an error in judgment may not necessarily be an integrity issue. You might just be stupid. <laughs> I did something this week that was so stupid, I have de I've been going back and forth, back and forth, even to this very moment, whether or not I should tell you this stupid thing that I did. For years, I have wanted a radar detector. Um, for years and years and years, I've... And, uh, I don't know why I'm so fascinated with it, and, and I didn't really want it. I, I mean, I, I don't drive on, on the highways. I, I don't drive in a way to get, get many tickets. I just don't get many tickets. And um, <laughs> I guess I figured I'd get even less with the radar detector. I really did not want a radar detector. <laughs> In order to drive faster, I really didn't. I just, I kind of want, I just felt like it would be cool to know what's going on, to know where the cops are before they know where I are or something. Um, to, to <laughs> I'm glad the cops are laughing. <laughs> uh, so, um, so this week, uh, earlier this week, I bought one. I, I don't know why, I just, I bought it, and it came yesterday, and I told my wife what I'd done. She said, are you out of your stupid mind? What in the world were you thinking? And, and so we talked uh, over, I never, I never asked her counsel or advice on whether or not to do it. I just did it, you know. And so, uh, you know, within 15 minutes, I realized that, I needed to take advantage of the 30-day money-back guarantee offer. <laughs> and so, you know, I'll ship it back next week. But it was just, just stupid. I mean, why would I do that? I mean, but, you know, sometimes you just, you just do stupid, right? And so, but that is an error in, in, in judgment. Now, it might have turned into an integrity problem if I'd used it in the wrong way. But anyway, that's not, that's not what we're really talking about today. We're really talking about doing something dishonest. So, I don't want you all to end up with some kind of false guilt, uh, feeling like you've done something sinful just because you're stupid, okay? Um, that's not the, uh, the idea here. However, this is a question. Do I regularly lie, cheat, and or steal, and do I do that in small things? Do I have, if you have an assistant... Do you have your assistant say, when you don't want to talk to somebody, uh, tell, tell them I'm not in? Do you do that? That is an integrity issue. Why not just have your assistant say, he can't come to the phone right now? I mean, it accomplishes the exact same thing, and nobody would be offended by it. What do you think, that somebody's going to think it's more legitimate for you not to take their call if, if, if they think that you're not there? I actually first became aware of this in my own company when I was walking down the hall one day and I heard one of our managers uh, tell his uh, assistant to tell the person on the phone, tell, tell him I'm not in right now. I'll have to get back to him. And I stopped dead in my tracks. And, I, 
And I, you know why I stopped there? It wasn't because I heard it. It was because I realized, wow, we could have a big customer in-house right now, and it could have been the customer walking down the hall, and the customer could have heard this lie. And, and then what would have... Well, the, the, the trust that was talking about her would just collapse. I mean, there would be an implosion of, of trust at that point. Little things are, are very important. Um, big things are also very important. And do you, on a regular basis, lie, cheat, and steal in, in big things? Is lying, cheating, and stealing getting easier? Practice makes perfect. Does my business system depend on deception? In order for me to be successful, does somebody have to believe a lie, for example? These, these are the integrity questions. Do I pay fair wages? If you are an employer. Do I charge fair prices? Do I pay fair prices? Or do I do caveat em tour but forget to tell the other person that that's what I'm doing? You know, we could have a big moral debate about caveat em tour, let the buyer beware. Uh, frankly, I don't think it's biblical. Um, I don't find any warrant under any circumstances for any of us as Christians in business to, to deal on the basis of that, let the buyer beware. That we have, we have a responsibility to treat buyers fairly. So this is a, a little personal inventory. Um, I think it's worth looking at Luke chapter 16 with regard to this. So if you have the Bible with you, turn to Luke 16. If you don't, that's fine. Just listen along. Verse 10. <clears throat> now, I would suggest to you that, that living a life in te of integrity is worth doing just because God says to do it. That you don't need any other reason. But if you need another reason, beyond the fact that God says to do it, <laughs> oh boy, I hope that's not the case. But anyway, if you, if, if you want more, there's something in this that pertains to you as, and me as well. Verse 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little, in other words, <clears throat> Whoever can be trusted not to do the little white lies on the telephone, whoever can be trusted not to fail to pay a, a toll. I mean, I've, I've, I've gone through a toll booth, you know, not paid because I didn't have the money. You know, everybody's done that. I'm talking about systemically, you know, not paying tolls, trying to, trying to beat the system, all these little things that people do. <clears throat> Whoever can be trusted with those little things can also be trusted with much. <clears throat> but, or, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. And that's, that's the point. <clears throat> it just keeps getting easier and easier and easier to lie, cheat, and steal. And so... Uh, almost every year, almost every year, we have somebody from our Bible study go to jail for a breach of integrity. Did you, did you know this? You probably didn't know this. Just about every year we have at least one person go to jail, go to prison, because of <clears throat> a breach in integrity. Because Well, because... They didn't do the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. The big idea today, the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. 
And then, what should I do when I fail? Well, <clears throat> you know, the samurai would fall on their swords. I don't suggest that. <laughs> Instead, what I'd like to do is I'd, I'd like to give you a road to restoration. <clears throat> and the first thing would be to do some self-examination. If, if the Holy Spirit has pricked your conscience a little bit today, either, either for something that's been done actually or something that might be done potentially, uh, then uh, these, are, these are my two self-examination verses. I often will go to these two texts and, and, and then the first one, Psalm 139, verses 23 and 20, 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. The, the, the literal world is my idolatrous thoughts. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out any offensive way in me, any idolatrous way in me. And, and lead me in your everlasting way. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that's offensive me. Show me how to live. And then uh, Psalm 19, verses 12, 13. Forgive my hidden faults. Keep me also from willful sins. So the things I know and the things I don't know. <clears throat> Forgive my hidden faults. Keep, keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then will I be innocent. Then will I be blameless, innocent of great transgression. So that would be a wonderful place to, to start uh, for restoring oneself. And then cessation. Uh, you basically, <clears throat> stop. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can't, you can't get by this by continuing uh, to do it. Um, you know in your heart if you have truly forsaken your sins. You know. There's a big difference between saying, I don't ever want to do that again, and having truly forsaken your sins in your heart. Uh, you know the difference. Uh, don't, so when I say cessation, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a true cessation enabled by the Holy Spirit. And then repentance. I've already said you can't behave your way out of what you believed your way into. And uh, so repentance is, is more than just being sorry for what you've done. It is, in, it, it is it's godly sorrow, but it's also metanoia. It's, it's a change. Repentance is a change. And then uh, restitution. Uh, I don't know how you can, uh, in some cases... In some cases, you, where restitution is due, you probably, it wouldn't be realistic to do it. But in many cases, where there has been uh, kind of a fresh, clear-cut defrauding, for example, uh, that restitution may be part of the road to restoration. Reward. There is no Reward. Why should you get a reward for not stealing? Get real. You know, this, is, this, is, <laughs> this is just doing what we're supposed to do. <laughs> There's no reward for integrity. Uh, you, you know, a, wow, I'm such a good boy because I didn't steal and rob and rape and murder. Um, the reward is you don't suffer the penalty. Um, obedience. In this road to restoration, obedience. William Penn said, right is right even if everyone else thinks it's wrong. And wrong is wrong even if everyone else thinks it's right. Obedience is, is the, the key to main, the maintenance of restoration. And you can't really do that by your own. For that, you need the Holy Spirit. Uh, how, how would you do these things on your own? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Uh, you need the Holy Spirit. You need to invite the Spirit of God to, co to, to come into your life, to forgive your sin, and then to lead you along this restoration. His, his power to do that. And then, I think the final thing to talk about this morning, 
Uh, if you would, uh, turn with me to Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. There are some things that can be done in a group. There is the pre-breach, and then there's the post-breach of integrity. One thing that a group of guys can do, or maybe it's just one other person, is protection. And by, by, being, by being open and honest with each other at your tables about your temptations, about the things you're struggling with, by not being proud and trying to pretend that you have it all together, uh, by being vulnerable with the guys and transparent with the guys as you table, as to the extent that trust has been earned. You, you don't want to... No one would ask you to violate the process of building a relationship and spill your guts to somebody you don't really know whether or not you can trust them or not. But to be, uh, to be in a group where there is some accountability, some accountability, where you have given some other men permission to meddle in your life a little bit. Not, not as your spiritual boss or your spiritual guy, but as a fellow pilgrim that you would let some guys into your life. And then the second thing would be is kind of like post-breach. You've already, already messed up. So here's, here's a word to all of you at, at the table. Verse 1 of chapter 6, Galatians. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. In the movie Seabiscuit, Charles Howard is the owner of the horse. John Smith is the man who uh, trained the horse. And so John Smith, when he first met Charles Howard, I guess there was a little problem with the horse. And Smith was thinking about getting rid of Seabiscuit, just didn't think it was going to work out. And Charles Howard said to him, he said, you don't throw a whole life away just because it's banged up a little bit. Remember that? And then later in the movie, when the jockey was badly beaten up and injured, um, Smith, who gave the advice to Howard, was thinking about dumping the jockey. And Howard said to Smith, he said, you know, about the jockey, he said, you know, you don't throw a whole life away just because it's banged up a little bit. And so in this area of integrity, we don't turn our backs on each other. We don't, we don't discard each other. What we do is because we're brothers in Christ is that we work to restore each other and hold each other accountable to a high standard. The standard of the big idea. And the big idea today is the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for making it so uh, crystal clear, so easy to follow, so easy to understand. The Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. Lord, I pray that uh, in this year we would be men of integrity, that we would be men found to have a one-to-one -one correlation between what it says in our Bibles what we believe in our minds, and how we behave before our neighbors. Would you bless us this way? If any man here needs uh, a restoration and would like to begin by uh, repentance, just take a moment right now and, and uh, ask God to, to forgive you in faith.
Lord, we pray that you would hear these prayers and forgive as you have promised in your word you would do to any who came to you in sincere heart. And now, brothers, if you would, uh, fix in your mind the single next right step that you should take. What is the next step that you should take? Lord, again, we pray that you would, by your spirit, give each of the men who have asked you, uh, who have outlined a step they'd like to take, uh, the, uh, the help that they need. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.